Hello, everyone. I know this is a little bit late, but we're going to be watching the PoE Lake of Calandra uh, announcement live stream. I have not seen any of this yet. I've been uh, injured, as it were, which really just means I've been sleeping for the past 72 hours because of pain medication. So I don't really, right now, going into this league, I don't plan to play it. Uh, the last league was kind of uh, not the best on launch day specifically. And uh, from a business side of things, PoE just doesn't do great numbers anymore to begin with. So going into this with the plans of not playing, let's see if the video changes any of those plans. We'll see how it goes. Exile, you have wandered far to arrive at the shores of my lake. A hidden realm. Is that Calandra? I have overseen for longer than time. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's cool MTX. These waters harbor deadly secrets. Rayclast is reflected here. Ooh. Reassemble it as you see fit. But the mirror distorts reality. I turn off those notification noises on my end. Beware the image that strikes back. The hell are Atlas memories? Oh, they got new gems finally. Bunch of unique items. Art looks good. Oh, that's also good. I saw a couple of those on Twitter. Arch Nemesis, Harvest, Beyond, okay. The lake calls to you, Exile. Will you endure? Or will you drown? Changes look okay. Now explain everything we just saw, Mr. Wilson. In the Calandra Challenge Earth. League, you will travel to the mirrored lake that granted Calandra her powers of reflection. We want you to experience the story for yourself, so I'll avoid spoiling the details here. When you get to explore the league next week, you'll find out more about Calandra and her motivations. Okay. Your experience with Calandra so far is probably of a coveted mirror, which duplicates items by reflecting them. True. The lake itself has the power to reflect entire encounters from elsewhere in Rayclust. As you explore the lake, these reflections emerge from its mirrored surface. Sometimes these reflections are encounters with hordes of monsters. Is this the RTX League? And sometimes you'll encounter extremely powerful foes reflected from elsewhere in Rayclust. Often, reflections involve League content, such as this encounter with a Harbinger boss. As you play through the League, you'll occasionally encounter a set of columns protruding from the ground, with a mirrored tablet on top. This tablet invites you to construct a custom set of encounters at the Lake of Calandra, offering a series of different reflections to place in whatever layout you wish. Each of these reflections represents an encounter that you must defeat when you next travel to the Lake. Okay. Once you have assigned a reflection to every location on your mirror tablet, no, which will take a few areas, you can open a portal to the Lake of Calandra itself. There you will get to experience these reflections of Rayclast as Calandra manifests each encounter you have chosen. But as you push farther out onto the lake shrouded waters, you will find each encounter to be more difficult, but more rewarding. This difficulty value counts up by one for each location away from the entrance the encounter is. Players wanting the best rewards will try to engineer tablets that have long windy strings of encounters, reaching very high difficulty values by the end. Ah. To do this, there are occasional options that can be chosen which allow you to move and swap the entrance, reflections, and water tiles on the tablet. Additionally, as you progress through the league, you'll be able to unlock special abilities that let you manipulate the options you have available on each tablet. If you don't like any of the choices available to you, you can earn the ability to skip picking one entirely. 
The next ability is even stronger. It lets you re-roll the list of options so that you can immediately pick another one. Finally, you can earn the ability to exile a choice entirely. For the rest of this tablet, that choice will no longer appear. Can. Once you reach maps, you'll be able to itemize your mirrored tablets so that they don't have to be played immediately. They can be stored oh, nice. for later or traded with other players. Oh, okay, so they come pre-built. As you visit the Lake of Calandra to attempt your mirrored tablets, there are many types of rewards you can find. An encounter that is based on a past league implicitly grants the rewards from that league, but with extra juice so that you're not missing out on bonuses you'd have obtained if your Atlas tree applied to the lake. Okay. Other encounters that aren't based on past leagues generally yield a reward chest that rises out of the lake when you complete the encounter. Certain reflections grant you access to a new variation on rare items, exclusive to the Calandra Challenge League. When you complete the encounter, you'll get access to some reflecting mist, which presents you with a difficult choice. It generates a rare ring or amulet with an unusual set of mods. Some are very high, and some are very negative, which hurt your character. The item is then duplicated, with a reflected copy having inverse mods. Negative ones are now positive, and vice versa. What? But they can't be all right? The amount right? of all of these mods are scaled up by is based on the difficulty of the encounter you just completed. You may only pick one of these items to keep. It'll often be a tough choice, with each item having its own strong pros and cons. But sometimes, you'll be offered an item where the negative mods aren't downsides for your build, and the juiced-up positive mods are very attractive. That's there are also nice. some special new jewelry base types that you can rarely receive from this process. One rare and difficult encounter rewards you with an advanced version of this crafting process. It allows you to bring your own ring or amulet, distorting and reflecting it with the same process described before. That's a very good necklace. The mods are scaled up in value and some are randomly negated. The reflected copy has the inverse set of negations. Wow. It will certainly be tempting to gamble with some of your best jewelry to try to double the values that really matter for your build and negate the ones you don't care about. If you're very lucky, you may find a special league exclusive unique ring at the lake. Calandra's touch mirrors the effect of your other ring. Huh. The Calandra Challenge League has something for everyone. It's an out-of-area combat league where you build your own sequences of encounters. It lets you fully dictate your desired level of risk and reward and fully customize what content you play. It features a powerful crafting system, valuable rewards, and offers a glimpse into the lore of one of Path of Exile's most iconic characters. We can't wait to play it with you next week. Okay. In every expansion leading up to Path of Exile 2's release, we'll be improving Path of Exile's endgame with new content to explore and new ways to customize your endgame experience. In the Lake of Calandra expansion, we're introducing Atlas Memories. They aren't a League feature, they're part of the core game, affecting Standard and persisting once the Calandra League has ended. In maps, you'll very rarely find a memory item, which represents a set of memories that an NPC has about their past. Something special happened to them while exploring maps, and you're able to experience those events for yourself. Let's have a look at a couple of examples. In this Atlas memory, Kirik tells you about the time that he stumbled across a staging ground for a Harbinger invasion of Rayclast. Each successive map you play in the sequence has more and more Harbinger portals and invaders that you must deal with. That's kind of cool. This is a memory of Nikos, where he entered a sequence of maps that were entirely consumed by permanent breaches like a Breach Lord's Domain. He survived to talk about it, but will you? Right-click a memory and apply it to a completed map on your atlas. It'll mark out a series of adjacent maps that the atlas memory will span. When you next talk to the relevant NPC in your hideout, they'll tell you about their recollections and will allow you to start exploring the memory. Each map in the sequence is provided for free by the NPC, and you'll be able to roll it like usual before... Oh, wow. It's provided for free? That's pretty incredible. Because these maps are memories of the NPC, they are not affected by your atlas tree. However, the content is generally as difficult and rewarding as a fully specialized atlas tree would cause it to be. Each successive map in the sequence gets harder and more rewarding as the memories intensify. While memories are tradable, they're also very rare and valuable, so you'll probably want to complete them yourself if you can. Huh. 
For players who love lore, Atlas Memories help expand on the backstory of key NPCs. For players wanting to try out different league mechanics at quite high levels of juice that they haven't specialized their Atlas for, Memories let them do this without a bunch of respecking. And for everyone else, Atlas Memories are a great way to earn some valuable items, if you're strong enough to complete them. Jeez. The Lake of Calandra expansion also contains a new unique map that I'm quite excited about. The Trial Master is back. This boss from Ultimatum, and more importantly, the unique items he drops, have been sorely missed and will be making a return as the Tower of Ordeals unique map in Lake of Calandra. This map can be created by completing difficult kind of in-game Val content. We have not forgotten about the rest of Ultimatum and have a specific plan for how it will return in the future. Whenever we're improving Path of Exile's endgame, we take every opportunity we can to add new variations of rewards that you can find. We don't want to say too much about how these are required, but in this expansion, it's possible to very rarely find special foil versions of any Pinnacle boss unique item. That's kind of sick. These have the same stats as regular ones, but are certain to be highly prized by collectors or wealthy players wanting to show off. That's cool. The Lake of Calandra expansion contains 14 new unique items. In addition to the Calandra's Touch Ring that is exclusive to the Calandra Challenge League, we have introduced a new endgame pinnacle boss reward, a supporter unique, the Tower of Ordeals unique map, six new Grand Spectrum jewels, and even some leveling uniques. The first we're showing you today is Soul Ascension, a pair of gloves designed by Zizarin. They uh, drop from the Uber Uber Elder. Soul Eater is a very powerful it. buff, but it is usually hard to obtain in boss fights. This like unique grants you the ability to gain stacks of Soul Eater when you hit a unique enemy, but also makes you lose those stacks if you aren't near one. Ghost Ride what is, is a leveling Soul unique which allows you to play as an almost pure energy shield character during early parts of the campaign. Oh, that's cool. We'll reveal the other new unique items in this expansion over the next week. Oh, it's attack speed? Oh. Path of Exile has a lot of unique items in its core drop pool. Over 700, in fact. We feel that there are two big problems with unique items at the moment. The first is that you find too many, and the second is that they are generally pretty useless when you do. Sure, there are some powerful endgame or build-enabling uniques that feel amazing to find, but the majority of unique items found throughout the game are rarely actually useful to you. In the Lake of Calandra expansion, we have made a lot of changes here. We have reduced the overall drop rate of uniques throughout the game and have rebalanced and overhauled over 100 existing unique items, with an emphasis on uniques in the core drop pool, including leveling uniques and some endgame uniques. Huh. You're going to find unique items less frequently now, but when you do, they're going to be a lot more punchy. I don't know if I like that. Nectar's Lantern has been completely changed from the ground up. Previously, it was trying to allow you to play a hybrid attacker and spellcaster, but it didn't really work very well. With the new design, it's a lot more elegant and delivers on this goal by simply granting high damage and the battle mage effect, so that your weapon damage is added to your spells. Eh. Thousand Ribbons is an example of an item where we merely needed to tweak values on the existing mods to make it a lot better. We want mod value rolls to matter more, and this item now showcases that well. If you find a high bad. rolled one early on, you're probably not replacing it for a long time. I still Malachi rather Simula wish it was be trying to deliver the Blood Mage fantasy by allowing you to spend life to cast your spells. This was meant to be special because the Blood Magic Keystone was far away from the Witch starting location on the skill tree. Unfortunately, this item wasn't really powerful enough to justify its use. It has now been overhauled, and alongside Blood Magic, it grants a powerful multiplicative damage boost. The double damage is nice. With over 100 uniques rebalanced in this way, your play experience is now punctuated by quite large bursts of power when you find one. We'll continue to examine the power level and rarity of more unique items in subsequent expansions. That's cool, I suppose. The Lake of Calandra expansion includes three new skill about. gems and one new support gem. See if these are any good. Alchemist Mark is a new Mark skill. Igniting or poisoning the Mark's target creates burning or caustic ground underneath them, based on the damage of the strongest ignite or poison on the enemy. The damage of the ground effects also scales with curse and mark effect, providing a non-standard way to scale okay. the build's damage. Hitting the marked target also refills some of your flask charges. This new skill opens up an extra source of damage for ignite or poison-focused characters, especially for ignite builds that want an alternative to flame surge or poison builds that cause fewer, higher damage poisons. 
This high-level build uses Flame Blast, with 100% of the damage converted to Chaos, to inflict huge poisons on enemies. When Alchemist Mark is cast on an enemy first, that enemy drops caustic ground when it's poisoned, scaled by those big Flame Blast poison hits, melting everything into a puddle. Eh, okay. Galvanic Field is a new shock-themed spell. When used, you gain a buff, granting a small bonus chance to shock. When you next shock an enemy, the buff is consumed and the enemy becomes energized, repeatedly zapping themselves and nearby targets. A lot like ball lightning. That might be alright. If the energized enemy dies, then the energy sits at their location and continues to zap things. Galvanic Single field's area of effect shit. and zap damage scale with the strength of the shock on the target. While Galvanic Field is great for any build that shocks, you can even fully build around it and use a skill with increased shock effectiveness like Arc to shock enemies and kill them with a ball of death. Lightning Conduit is another new shock-themed spell. A wave propagates out from the target location, causing lightning bolts to strike all shocked enemies in a large area. That looks kind of interesting. The damage is scaled by the strength of the shock on each enemy. Lightning Conduit cannot itself shock and won't hit non-shocked enemies at all, so the challenge with this skill is to find a way to consistently apply powerful shocks to your targets to make the most of Lightning Conduit's high damage potential and area of effect. This high that level build right. uses Wave of Conviction to shock enemies, before casting Lightning Conduit until they're obliterated. For longer fights, it can employ Galvanic Field to create a constant source of lightning damage. Last but not least, Overcharge Support is a new support gem that causes supported skills to deal less damage, but makes them inflict much stronger shocks and grants them a higher chance to shock. Overcharge lets many different lightning skills create powerful shocks. I don't know, none of these, uh... Use this to take advantage of Shock's of large damage multiplier, or to activate Lightning Conduit and Galvanic Field. As Path of Exile expands, we often revisit previous leagues, reworking them so they stay relevant and engaging. In Lake of Calandra, we are targeting three such leagues, Arch Nemesis, Beyond, and Harvest. The larger context here is that we have been re-examining what role rare and magic monsters have in Path of Exile. The introduction of Arch Nemesis modifiers as the monster mod pool prompted quite a lot of discussion about how often you should encounter rare and magic monsters, how difficult they should be to kill, and how rewarding their deaths should be. Previously, League content made fights hard by spawning a lot of rare monsters. A that whole looks lot. like POE. In some cases, six to eight times the normal rate of rare monsters. Now that we have better mods available to make fights against rare monsters individually challenging, we have gone through the whole game and normalized the rate that rare monsters are spawned at. Some leagues had quite large reductions in spawn rate. You won't encounter situations with dozens of rare monsters on screen at once anymore. Alongside this reduction of how many rare monsters you'll face, we have improved their rewards and made sure that they scale with both difficulty of the encounter and any item rarity or quantity bonuses that you have. <sighs> During the campaign, you'll only encounter one and two mod rare monsters. The two mod encounters are a bit harder and have better drops. In maps, you'll stop encountering one mod rare monsters entirely, and will mostly encounter two and three mod rare monsters. It'll also be possible to encounter four mod rare monsters again. Not only are the innate item drop bonuses scaled up significantly on monsters with many mods, but we've made these challenging encounters rewarding in another way too. Which About is... a third of the more powerful Arch Nemesis modifiers now use a special reward conversion system. For example, if you defeat a monster with a Corruptor mod, all of its drops become corrupted. The Solaris Touched mod converts all of its item drops to maps. Okay. The Katava Touched mod will cause the rarity of its drops to be upgraded by one tier, so magic becomes rare, rare becomes unique, and so on. That's not bad. If you're lucky, you can find these conversion modifiers on both the third and fourth mod of a rare monster. This causes them to stack together. So if you kill a 4 mod rare monster with both the Entangler and Katava touched mods on it, its heavily juiced drops will also be converted to jewels with their rarity upgraded by a tier. Due to the high amount of inherent item rarity that 4 mod rare monsters have, this may result in several unique jewels dropping. Okay. This conversion system is fully compatible with your item rarity and quantity bonuses, as well as the drop bonuses from all other Arch Nemesis mods. Going forward, we want to make sure that a lot more item reward mechanics scale with your character item bonuses. Get your magic find characters ready.
As a result of this system, when you do encounter a rare monster with many Arch Nemesis mods, you are well rewarded for the difficult fight. God damn. We have all also been shit. listening to feedback about the Arch Nemesis mods that can spawn on magic monsters. Too many of them had external visual clarity issues, like on death effects. We have toned these down on magic monsters so that more of them are stat based bonuses that aren't so spammy. Encounters that spawn a series of magic monsters, now make sure to preserve the same Arch Nemesis modifiers between the monsters rather than rolling a different one for each monster. This will further help keep the game state understandable in hectic situations. Beyond was introduced in August 2014, initially as a hardcore only challenge league. What it's eight years old now and certainly has several issues. Firstly, the art. Have you ever really taken a close look at a Beyond Demon? It is literally a bandit from Act 2, dunked in red paint. The second issue is its balance. The number of magic and rare monsters spawned is so much higher than the rest of the game. And whatever problems that resulted in before are magnified now that rare monsters are meant to be more difficult. Yeah. Beyond also spawns way too many unique bosses, which causes its own set of issues. You don't think? In Lake of Calandra, we have given Beyond much more than a fresh coat of paint. The Scourge have taken over the realm of the Beyond Demons. The old bandit Beyond Demons are gone. Summoning monsters from Beyond will now summon Scourge monsters and bosses. We have completely rebalanced the rate that Beyond monsters and bosses spawn at so that it's appropriate for modern Path of Exile. The new That's Beyond cool, monsters can now occasionally drop the Scourge League's tainted currency items that allow you to modify corrupted items. That's good. Six links are back. We've also completely revamped how harvest crafting works. That's Rather nice. Rather than being presented with a selection of crafting options that must be used immediately, you now receive itemized tradable life force of the appropriate color. Oh, that's good. This life force can be used later in your own time at the hoarder crafting bench in your hideout. Its crafting options are now priced in terms of this itemized life force currency. That's great. Tier four bosses are now encountered much more frequently and can drop a key to fight a shabby. She yields special life force, which can be used for a specific set of crafts. That seems we have good. rebalanced all harvest crafts for the new system and have removed a bunch of filler crafts and some ones with deterministic outcomes that were incredibly RNG gated before. Some crafts that provided access to exclusive content, like the special offerings to the goddess, have been removed because these items can now be found in more appropriate locations elsewhere in the game. Oh, this is a good change. The result of these changes is that when you complete a harvest, you aren't presented with 30 crafts, which must either be used immediately or unsafely traded to some player you found on a community Discord server. That's it also change. means that every bit of life force you receive is going towards a craft that you actually want to use on one of your items when you're ready to use it. Your interaction with the Sacred Grove is now far simpler as well. Just enter, pick your plots, defeat the monsters, and get on with your mapping. Like with Arch Nemesis and Beyond, we have also addressed the monster composition of Harvest's fights, so that it doesn't contain too many rare monster mods, and so that it is of appropriate difficulty for its rewards. In addition, the rewards for Harvest now scale with map quantity and pack size, incentivizing you to juice your maps. That's good. Previously, the crafts you received were not scaled up at all if you played a harder map. Last week, we posted this expansion's character balance manifesto, which detailed the many changes we're making in Lake of Calandra. There are plenty more changes, which we will include in the full patch notes that will be posted after this live stream. But on this stream, I'd like to talk about a few specific areas. Minion itemization, exalted and divine orbs, and the trickster ascendancy class. Okay. Historically, minion builds have not been particularly reliant on the stats of their items. Most of the power of their minions came from their skill and support gems. This led to a few problems. Firstly, it gave them a bit of a free ride compared to most other character builds. And secondly, it meant that it was hard for minion players to actually specialize their character to be really, really good. We want to solve both of these problems in this expansion. Path of Exile is a game about items, and that means that you will now be strongly rewarded for finding items that make your minions better. It also means that, like with other builds, if you find good items, you'll be far more damaging and survivable than before. We described a variety of minion changes in last week's character balance manifesto. Today I want to show you the new base item types we have added to help your minion itemization. We've added a new ring base type, the bone ring. This ring has implicit minion elemental resistances and can roll minion related modifiers. How the fuck did you get 66 lightning resistance though? 
We've added level 20 and 50 versions of the Convoking Wand, called the Calling Wand and Covenant Wand respectively. That's good. Like the Convoking Wand, these new base types can roll minion-related modifiers. Some new minion-related mods have been Wait, added so to the pool available to these they mods, nerf and some minions, existing though, mods have been adjusted or made this more common. Insane. We have repurposed the bone-themed spirit shields so that they have minion damage implicit mods rather than spell damage. What the fuck? They can fuck? also roll minion-related mods. Alongside the stable of existing unique items, there's now quite a lot more base type support for minion characters, and good mods on those base types can stack head? up to some pretty large bonuses for your minions. I also wanted to discuss two of the rarest currency items in Path of Exile, Divine Orbs and Exalted Orbs. These actually have the same drop rate, but Exalted Orbs are worth so much more in trade because there's no easy vendor recipe for them, and because they're consumed when you craft certain meta mods onto items. Out of these two currency items, we would actually prefer the Divine Orb effect to be rarer, so that unique items with good rolls matter more, and so that players can exalt craft their items more frequently. We are making two changes that will impact this. Firstly, we are changing the cost of crafting meta mods so that they cost divine orbs rather than exalted orbs. Secondly, we are changing the six link vendor recipe to grant 20 orbs of fusing rather than a divine orb. Ooh. This change will result in exalted orbs being far more available for crafting, and divine orbs less available for re-rolling mods on items. It'll certainly be interesting to see what the de facto trade currency becomes next league. <sighs> next I'd like to talk about the Trickster Ascendancy class. We haven't been happy with the state of this Ascendancy class recently. While it used to be quite powerful, we moved its defining feature, Ghost Dance, onto the main passive skill tree. Since then, it has had a confused identity and hasn't met the power level of the other Ascendancy classes. In this expansion, we have reworked the Trickster, with a focus on establishing thematically appropriate defenses and ways to manipulate speed. One step ahead allows the Trickster to manipulate time in an interesting way. Enemies are slower than normal and cannot have their action speed raised above this value, such as through an acceleration shrine. Conversely, the Trickster is faster by default and cannot have action speed lowered below this value, effectively making them immune to effects that lower action speed such as freeze, chill, or temporal chains. Spellbreaker ties together spell suppression and energy shield in a powerful way. Spellbreaker grants some spell suppression chance, which is an effect that reduces damage taken from spells. The skill also starts your energy shield recharge half the time you suppress spells. Since trickster characters tend to have a high evasion rating, you will be evading some hits and recharging on others, meaning that your energy shield recharge stays active most of the time. Uh, that's, that's pretty good. Spellbreaker also further yeah, improves defenses by reducing the damage you take bit. from suppressed spells while on full energy shield. For those that want a different way to recover energy shield, the powerful Soul Drinker notable passive is no longer exclusive to forbidden jewels from the Uber Searing Exarch and Eater of Worlds. Any trickster can now allocate this skill. Huh. Polymath provides more bonus damage, life, mana, and energy shield on kill for each different type of mastery you have allocated. It reinforces the idea of a trickster being a jack of all trades, and will lead to interesting decisions when planning your passive tree, I don't trying think to fit in as many different types that. of masteries as possible. Overall, the new trickster is intended to be the shadow's answer to the champion, but faster. He should be an exciting option for players who want to get a lot of evasion, energy shield, and recovery out of their ascendancy class while still being able to melt enemies. Uh, maybe, I guess. I don't know. Alongside today's really live care. stream, we're launching two new series of supporter packs, the Knight and Rogue packs. Now, here's what I Each care about right here. Each contains the packs full face value and points, plus several exclusive microtransactions. These packs are only available during the Calandra League and will leave the store forever in three months. Every microtransaction you are about to see is entirely cosmetic and does not affect your character's progression or power. The Knight cool. pack series contains six exclusive microtransactions, including the full Nightmaster armor set. The Aetheric Mana Flask releases a burst of mana upon activation, then draws in energy from the environment as your mana refills. Okay. The Hoarder's Stash is a stash skin that can be used in your hideout. As you place items in the stash, they hover above it until you're finished, before being sucked into storage. That's kind of cool. This is the Nightmaster armor set. 
While wearing its helmet, your actions are periodically duplicated by an ethereal copy of yourself. The blood scouring cloak absorbs blood as you slay monsters, attracts your kill streak, and cleans itself off when the slaughter ends. The Ring of the Victor causes a podium to rise up underneath you when you are standing still, elevating you above other players. <laughs> oh boy. Seek refuge here. The Warlord's Lieutenant Portal summons a warrior spirit who will greet you, cheer you on, kind and commend cool you on thing. your actions. Cool portal. What's the other one? The Rogue Pack series has six exclusive microtransactions, including the Rogue Stalker armor set. The Beast of Burden Pit visually carries your items for you, becoming more laden with bags and packs the more full your inventory gets. Kind of cool. The Collector Serpent Shield covets the treasure you find. Whenever you pick up an item, the serpent darts out to grab it. All right. This is the Rogue Stalker armor set. While wearing its gloves, critical strikes cause blades to appear and slice at your enemies. Okay. The corpse bloom footprints cause exotic plant growth in your wake. The plants especially love corpses and will seek them out and grow in larger patches around them. That's just an FPS dropper right there. On the other hand, the Undertaker's amulet inters corpses for you, burying them and marking their location with gravestones. The unstable cool. explosives back attachment is not for the faint of heart. As your life gets lower and lower, it gets closer and closer to exploding. Weird. And when you die, your party members will certainly feel it. I kind of like that for hardcore players. As I mentioned players. before, these packs are exclusive to the Calandra League and will leave the store in three months. They're available right now at pathofexile.com slash purchase, and they directly fund the ongoing development of Path of Exile 2 and Path of Exile 1 expansions like Lake of Calandra. In addition, the supporter packs introduced with a Sentinel expansion are leaving the store forever in one week. Now's your last chance to purchase them, and we greatly appreciate your support. I don't know how many of those I bought. Speaking of things leaving the store, the Kerrix Vault Pass for Sentinel is only available for the next few days also, and will leave the store forever when the League ends. There's no penalty for purchasing the pass late in the League after you've wrapped up your map completion. I hate so this FOMO shit. So if you're pleased with you've got to win maps in Sentinel and want to lock in your unique skins, it's not too late to buy your pass. Next up, we've got the Q&A with Ziggy D. Once that ends, we'll post the full patch notes for Lake of Calandra. Over the next week, our community team will post teasers for new and revamped unique items, upcoming quality of life improvements, and an announcement for the League launch race event. Oh. On launch weekend, we'll be running another set of Twitch drops, and expect to release the new Mystery Box and Kerrick's Vault Pass in the days after launch. Thanks for joining us and checking out today's reveal. Well, we're not going to watch the Q&A. We can't wait to see you in Rayclast on August 19th. We'll begin the Q&A in a few moments, so please get that your questions seems okay. ready in chat. I don't know. It didn't really like wow me. It just seems like more PoE. I, I, I don't know if I'm going to, I might play. If I do, it probably won't be for very long. It just seems like there's more systems. Yeah. Maybe play off stream. Just not excited about it. I, I don't feel like doing those 10 acts over again. I mean, I've probably done them. I've probably played through that campaign like 50 times at this point. Um, I, the, the currency also seems like it's going to be a little bit wonky for this league as, as people adapt to a bunch of stuff. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. 
I like the league though. The the league itself seems kind of cool. That might be kind of fun to play through that. I also never killed like the Uber Uber stuff, but I don't know if I have the time to put in uh, for that. So yeah, I don't know. Kind of a man announcement for me. Uh, I'm curious what the rest of the community feels about it. So I'll probably go check that out. Uh, let me know in the comments over on YouTube what you think. And if you're super stoked for more PoE or if you're waiting for PoE 2, like most of us. All right. That's that. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in a bit.